Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and today Jake and I are going to be making some apple pie candy as part of our holiday feast assortment. In 2019, I decided to start making some Thanksgiving flavors. I made sweet corn to start with. I then made candied ham. And I made 11 flavors when I was done. I went, oh my goodness, what did I do? I made too much candy. No one's going to buy all of this. I decided to call it a candy feast so it could be used for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. To my surprise, in a couple of weeks, it all sold out. So we're doing it again this year. We're going to do 10 or 11 flavors again. And it's going to be a little different than last year because we're going to change the flavors up some. So far, we heated the sugar to about 310 degrees. We have already flavored it and we poured it on our candy cooling table and let it cool just a little bit before we're working in the food coloring. And I'm working in the red food coloring and Jake's working in the brown. And the water that's in the food coloring is boiling off and we want this to boil off because if the water stays in the candy, the candy will become sticky. And we want this candy to have a maximum lifespan to make it to you. The purpose of this project last year was to see if we could make perfect flavors in candy. And you can go back and you can see our video number 117 on sweet corn and 119 on ham. And if you've tried any of this, post it in the comments what your experience was, if you got last year's assortment. Because the ham was really a dichotomy. You put it in your mouth, and it didn't taste like candy. It tasted like ham. It tasted like really good ham. And uh, the apple pie should be the same way. I only hope I do as good an artwork on it this year as last year. You can see last year's and then montage image. The candy on the table is cooled, or at least it's cooled around the edges where it hit the bars and it hit the table. Because of this, we lift up the pieces of candy and we let the hot bits drop to get on the surface of the table, and we put the cold bits on top of the hot bits. We're trying to get the temperature to be a consistent temperature. We have to do sculpture next, and we want it to behave like a clay, not like a liquid. Each flavor I made in last year's assortment was as good as the one before, no matter how strange I did it. This included the dressing candy. Now, I'm using the southern definition of dressing, where dressing is like a stuffing, in this case a celery stuffing, but not cooked in a bird, cooked outside it in a tray. Last year I hit it dead on. This year I hope to do as good. So most of the candy we left is amber, but we need it to be white to use it for the background. And we do this by pulling it on the hook. And Jake here will be folding it over the hook again and again, each time trapping in millions of air bubbles. Now the air bubbles actually don't change the color. They change the optics of the candy, and we're playing an optical game here. Each of the bubbles are round, and they actually let light through the bubble, so light backs bounces off a concave surface and a convex interior. This randomizes the light and reflects it as if it's white. So the candy itself isn't white, but the reflection is. And this way we can make white candy without food coloring. Now people have asked, why don't you use white food coloring? And the answer is we sometimes do. Some patterns need it. But white food coloring is titanium oxide, and we're just not keen on eating that. So we leave it out when we can. It means we have to pull the candy more than other candy makers, takes a little bit more work. But all these little air bubbles, well, they create more surface area on the candy. As it dissolves in your mouth, it dissolves a little faster, and this gives the flavors more of a punch. Not only does it make it look cool, but it makes it taste better. So an online acquaintance of mine, Megan, posted that she found turkey dinner candy corn. Apparently Brock's is doing something similar to what I did last year, this year. And I can only hope that they were inspired by me because, you know, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? She reviewed the candy corn, but started off by saying she doesn't like candy corn. I seem to be one of the few people who actually do. And I'm kind of interested in how this would be side by side with my candy. Now, I have a bag of this unopened, but I always hate to try what other people have done if it's in the bent of what I've done, because I never knew if I invented then or I'm copying them. What I'd love to see is one of you do a side-by-side -side taste test, and if you do, let me know, because I'd be real interested in finding out. I can tell you I worked off and on for five or six years to try to get a turkey candy flavor that worked, and I just don't think it's possible. That's why I went with ham, which I think I nailed. 
If you'd like to try this candy for yourself, just go over to our website, www.pd.net. We ship worldwide. And while you're there, get on our email list for updates, deals, and new things. You can also click on our subscribe button here on YouTube so you can keep up with our videos. And of course, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we're out there and we have a weekly podcast. On the table, we made three colors, but we're going to need six. We're going to have a dark brown, a light brown, a dark red, a light red. We're going to have a clear, and we're, of course, going to have the white. And each color is made out of another color. The clear is unpulled white. We reserved some of that. The red gets mixed with the white to make a pink, and the brown gets mixed with the white to make a lighter brown. And we use these for different parts of the pie. People always talk about mom's apple pie. Well, my mom makes an apple pie in a glass dish, so that's why I'm using clear. This pie dish will be clear, and if you hold the piece of candy up to the light, there'll be a little bit of candy maker's magic, and you'll actually see a clear dish. Right through it, light will come. I'm putting the pie between two metal bars. This is just going to keep it from going wide under its own weight. Then I'm going to put the clear top to the dish on, and that'll also form the handles. And then, of course, we're going to put the pie crust on. If you want to find out more about this series of candies or any of our other candies, subscribe to our podcast. It's also called Lofty Pursuits, and you can download it wherever podcasts are, ranging from Spotify to Apple to our website from the podcast button. This podcast and many of our other cool projects are brought to us by our Patreon subscribers. And I want to thank them all and thank you if you want to consider going to the Lofty Pursuits Patreon page and joining the other subscribers and supporting us. Without steam, it wouldn't be a steaming hot piece of apple pie. So we're adding steam like we added steam to our coffee. And we're just making an S-curve, multiplying it with a spacer and putting it on top. Because, you know, we want the apple pie hot. And we don't want the apple pie with cheddar on top at the moment. And that's another story for a podcast or for a video. We don't know all the flavors that are going to be in this year's assortment yet because we're still experimenting with a couple. We're definitely going to have sweet corn, butternut squash, sweet potato casserole. We're having apple pie. We're going to have a blueberry cobbler. We did peach last year. Cranberry sauce, of course. Our ham, which I think is just wonderful. Our dressing, which is I think is wonderful. And I thought this year we'd do a, a Moscato or Prosecco as our wine, because you need a glass of wine to enjoy with dinner. And of course, the wine's not alcoholic, so the whole family can do it. And then we're going to add a few flavors. I was thinking beets. Beets always struck me as a flavor that would do well in candy. And I'm not sure they will yet. I'll know probably before this weekend's over, because that's when I'm going to be making them. And yes, there'll be a video in the near future. I'm not sure we're going to bring back bread, but I've improved the bread recipe, so maybe I will. And the pecan pie may be retired for this year, but don't worry. It'll come back soon. It's really good. Now we have to make it bite-sized, so we size down this giant log of candy into rods, and we start by pinching off one end. Don't worry, when we cut off that end, it doesn't go to waste. We sell it in the store under the name Unicorn Droppings. We've been thinking about selling them online, but we haven't yet. And if you're interested in one, the only way to find out that we're coming out with it is to be on our email list. You can join at www.pd.net. Now that we've pulled the log into rods, the only thing that's left to do is to cut them into individual bite-sized pieces. And we do this on our Canva.
Now let's look at the final candy. You can get this for yourself with its other siblings in the variety pack for the Candy Feast at www.pd.net. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And what's more, if you ever come by Tallahassee, we're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10. You can come and see us in person. We don't make candy every day, but we make it an awful lot. And if we're not making candy, please come by for breakfast, lunch, dinner, shop our toys. And this is all in the middle of my toy store. There's more to Lofty Pursuits than just candy. A lot more. And we'd love to see you there. In any event, subscribe to our videos and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you again for watching. We really appreciate it.